time to appreciate that the car in front of me has three bikes on top of this head. Stepping stones. Yep. I laid all those Here I am editing a video on our premiere now because. Oh. Oh. Alright, good morning, guys. Uh, it's kind of a bit weird with me starting a vlog in um, a car. I normally start off with like a bed of like what I plan to do, but um, I kind of actually forgot what was supposed to happen. So um, we're about to head off for our final day in Tasmania. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is um, we're going back to Phil's house and um, we're basically just walking around, you know, having our final chats before, you know, I we head our separate ways. I make that sound like a sad farewell, but um, I'm actually most likely going to come back here again. And after that, I'm going to head back to Sydney and uh, yeah, basically that's it. So I'm um, time to go to Philip's house for one last time. Okay, time to head out of this motel for the second last time. Uh, the last time is actually when I'm going to pick my dad up because I'm actually alone in this car. My dad's not with me. So... I just need to try to get out because I've actually never gone out of this place before. Oh, nor getting in. I've never actually yeah, driven in this place be before. Wow. Be Hopefully I know how to navigate the places because I might be lost. Now that you know my dad's not here and I have more, you know, more room to talk, I gotta yeah, say to this place really is beautiful. You know, the houses, you know, the mountains in the distance. It's absolutely fantastic. We're back at the CBD of Hobart now. Near here is where we first ate our dinner in you know, day three, episode three. And um, it's a beautiful restaurant called The Glass House, like near here. And it's actually considered pretty luxurious. Oh, look at that. It's a school zone. Seems like we're not the only ones who have this kind of like 40 limit thing near schools. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, yeah. Be safe around children, guys. Well, I just learned something. This school zone signs are like completely different and they only light up when there's a school zone and then, you know, there's no end school zone sign. You just put like a speed limit sign up there. So I assume like the times when the school zones differ, like from school to school, unlike in New South Wales, it's always 8 o'clock to 9.30, 2.30 to 4, even if the schools aren't even finished yet. But uh, yeah, I guess that's how the system works, which I actually kind of prefer over to our 8 to 9.30, 2.30 to 4, because, you know, our school really only has high activity between 8 to 8.45, and then after 8.45, everyone's already at school. Like, you don't need another school zone. So yeah, that's what I don't really like about these, like, school zone signs. And I think in America, they they just slap on the school zone sign regardless of the time. You have to obey it even at night. Which makes zero sense. Freaking United States. You're literally considered the default country of the world, but you're also the oddity of the world. Freaking hell. I just realized the majority of the houses along this strip of road are just like farmhouses and they're like humongous with great views and all. So this area is pretty cheap to live in, but it definitely has its own costs. Everything's also more expensive because shipping prices are more expensive since most of the produce are for producing the mainland. And even if they're not, most of them are flown into the mainland and you know they will require like extra shipping in order to get to Tasmania. So Did you get yourself ready just for sorry? We'll go we'll go over that way. Alright. Okay, so I'll get in. Alright, sure. I'll get in. We'll go we'll drive um down, just cut out the first 20 minutes of it. Just so we um oh, don't right, get sure. too late. Sure. How do you feel? Hey, how are you? Oh, uh, good. How how's it feel to be on my car? <laughs> yes, it <was> pretty cool. <laughs> it, did you wait out there like just because? How how long did you wait out there? Oh no, like two minutes. Because I was just I was I was just looking at the time. Um, I was just inside, and then I was like, oh wait a sec, it's yeah. kind of getting a bit later. I think we'd probably better cut out the first twenty minutes. So I, I came out here, yeah. and you arrived like two minutes later. Ah. And then I was like, oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> so we'll drive to Point Pearson. I'll tell you yeah. where to stop. And there's parking spots there, so. All right, I see. Yeah, so it's not like you'd be parking at the side of the road. <laughs> there's no side of the road on yeah, the Yeah, I know. <laughs> People do park at the side of the road to pick oh. berries there and stuff. Oh, that's, pr that's yeah, pretty dangerous. Illegal, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So this point that we're heading to? Yeah, it's Pearson's Point. It's, it's probably about a five minute drive. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. So it was used during the wartime basically. Yeah. Um, so it was to stop soldiers coming into the Hobart region by boat. So the soldiers would station there and try and shoot anyone with cannons coming by to boat. Oh, like I see. to Hobart. 
basically I'd have to pass through this area before going to Hobart. Oh, uh, so this this place is at like the southern tip of like you know Tasmania, and where invaders are most likely to drop by. Yeah, yeah. It's well, it's near Hobart. It's, we're technically it's still, if you wanted to get to the bottom of Tasmania, like closer to Antarctica, it's still over an hour's drive from here. Oh, okay. yeah. We're not going down there. <laughs> yeah, I know. It looks creepy here. All the <laughs> vines coming down. Yeah, I know. Uh, we had to plug that cargo section out because um, my GoPro just completely overheated. There's yep. Philip. Hey guys. <laughs> and um, this is a World War II cannon. Yep. The funny thing about this cannon is they built it to defend like the sea from Hobart being invaded. Yeah. But they um actually realised when they built it, it was actually useless because it wasn't big enough to actually fire anything. Yeah. So it was kind of useless. They're, um, from what I've heard. It's not very nice, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll ignore that. So yeah, the indigenous people here were upset about this being put on their land. So oh. that was kind of what happened. We'll come down here and check this is a special lighthouse. And then we'll check out the really creepy place. Oh no. Oh yes, the creepy place. You don't have nightmares. I can see some people are still upset about this area. Yeah, but it's, it's quite um, Quite insane the amount of graffiti. Um, you want to go in? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> he's, he's got his face to this. Oh yeah, it's pretty creepy. So this was where they actually hung out. Um, yeah. The soldiers would have hung out. We're gonna need a little bit of light here. So it's it's pretty intense. Wow. So this place cut has all some. What's all the graffiti and all that? <laughs> it sounds like a place where like gang members like shoot each other. <laughs> it does. I mean, it's, it feels like it's it feels like some kind of first person shooter map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, either a first person shooter or a Tony Hawk game. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We all make mistakes from time to time. Unfortunately for me, being me Fame was mine. Was mine. Wow. You're right about the creepy part. <laughs> I, I said that. So, yeah, this is just a mini attraction. We'll go check out like their other little. Bunker. I don't know if you call it a bunker, but there are other places yeah. now, and then um, we'll head down to Box Road. You were going to call this a mini Let's Explore episode. <laughs> a mini Let's Explore. I was actually joking when I said Let's Explore, but if you're doing it, <laughs> you're doing it. <laughs> well, Let's Explore is kind of more like, the concept is more like, you know, you ask the viewers to, you know, yeah, yeah. check so it's out. It's not really a Let's Explore. <laughs> yeah, it's more, more of like a... It's more of a, explore. we're exploring. <laughs> Feel our little tourist uh, tour guide, yeah. you know, guiding us towards each of the areas and attractions and their past history. <laughs> well, I, I listened to a few radio things about this place. The Fort Pearson Reserve. That was you can see how small this area was. I think this had quite a few people in it. And they had just hanging out here. Yeah, the fireplace here, yeah, that would have kept them warm. And I can see the wood's probably dead for about 80 years now, yeah? <laughs> no, I think people have just chucked that in actually. Oh. Yeah, this place though isn't being preserved very well, it's just being graffitied and it's yeah. kind of the windows have popped in, it's fallen apart actually. Yeah. That was supposed to be a window, but as you can see, I yeah. can put my hand straight through it, no window. <laughs> no editing there either, that's like legit. <laughs> yeah, they got some more. Um, Info here about the place. Yeah. You see? Um, we'll even pop up to the top. There's um a nice war man who's I can see he is a officer of the British Empire. Interesting. It's a mini tourist attraction, but not really a tourist chase, it's the mini yeah, one. I see. Oh they even have a tennis game here. You know, I, I know you guys are not really that, that much into sports, so you probably you guys probably haven't even went down for one, so. I saw Diana play that tennis game. She doesn't even know what the different kinds of shots are. Yeah, that was kind of embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. So, that video, like, I didn't even know how it worked. And yeah. when I was trying to set it up, it was like, foul, foul. And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And my dad's like, you've got to hit it so it doesn't go outside those lines. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh. I thought there was like a glitch with the, you know, software, but it wasn't. It yeah, was so I was, I was thinking, like, instead of like, you know, the premiere video, I was thinking of doing another like gaming through time video, but oh, yeah. that wasn't working. <laughs> the premiere was a whole bunch of mess. 
But then, but then, you know, I saw how these guys are like, you know, they're not really that great at sports, so, you know. Yeah. I'm just, you know, scrap that. The Premier video actually did work though in the end. Yeah, after so, such a struggle. I don't think you guys can see it, but through the trees there, that's Bruny Island, so... That's a well, I can't even see. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that can. We'll see it when we get down lower. Yeah. But yeah, this is what life is like in a rural area. You walk down and you see the occasional house every now and then, but nothing much else. This place, being a farm, I mean, you got, you, I gotta say, you know, the living conditions are, you know, quite nice. And the fact that this place has NBN earlier yeah. than, you know, a lot of the areas in Sydney. Yeah, like we were, we came here from Sydney. No NBN. We came here and we had NBN 50. <laughs> but we can't get NBN 100 here. Yeah, I see. Sadly. But you know, this place, this, I mean, even if you get like NBN, like ADSL, I'd be pretty impressed. You get 4G here as well on your phone. Wow. So, so they actually do care about the rural people because normally when they go to like, you know, rural New South Wales, there's nothing. So there's some no people signal. in Tinderbox actually have 5G. What? I know! Like, what is that? But not many, it's like a few houses just at the edge of Tinderbox. Because uh. they've got 5G in Kingston. So. There's Bruni, I don't know if you can see Yeah. <laughs> so, so this whole 5G thing, uh, but how do you... You know, people, some, some people link with the coronavirus, how like, you know, the 5G is causing it. What do you think about that? Yeah, the 5G is legit not sending out coronavirus. <laughs> it doesn't send out bacteria. It doesn't send out viruses. So there's yeah. no 5G coronavirus link. Wow, so people actually believe that and they want to jail Bill Gates for that. Yeah, I know. They've been blowing up the 5G towers, which is pretty insane. Yeah. It's kind of like saying, um, whatchamacallit, a, a, a computer virus yeah. could go and, you know, <laughs> infect humans somehow. You know, it can't happen unless you've got a... Neuralink in your head. Oh, which might actually happen in the yeah, near future. Yeah. They're actually testing it now. Yeah, they are. Neuralink's going pretty well. Yeah. Are you afraid of that or? No, I'm looking forward to Neuralink. Oh. Be able to download a map into your head, know where you are, be able to record your dreams as actual <laughs> video files. Like these are all interesting things. Yeah, you know. Download a whole course. Of, Ten years in university, you know how to be a doctor in just a matter of however fast you. But what? Well, but if if we have Neuralink, why would they even need to be doctors? Ah, uh, yeah. Well. We go. You could just let the neural like heal the patient. Yeah, well, that would require, you know, perfect, well, actually, yeah, well, for diseases <laughs> that Neuralink could, Neuralink can cure a lot of diseases, a bunch. Yeah. But, jelly, you know, just because of the signals in the brain, but it can't actually fix a broken leg. Ah. Oh. You know, or, or an arrow through your arm. It's not like <laughs> the brain can be send signal to make blood push arrow out of arm, you know. <laughs> not that many people get arrows in their arm, but yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, if you if you are like living three hundred years ago, people get arrows in the arms, you know, quite All often. The time, yeah. But you know, well, not three hundred years ago. This is Bruni. <laughs> Finally, the trees aren't covering it. Yeah. So this is in a whole different landmass, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's not connected to Tassie. Yeah, I see. And I was just saying, like, I haven't been like out of this landmass for like, you know, since twenty eighteen. Until just then, I took the spirit of Tasmania like a couple of days ago. This landmass being like the mainland of Australia? Like mainland yeah, I haven't went out of like, you know, like the Australian landmass for so long. <laughs> and then finally I took the, you know, the spirit of Tasmania here and, you know, finally got to live in a different <laughs> landmass because like normally, you know, I visit, you know, other like Country. other places, you know, in China and all that sort of stuff because, you know, I go back there to visit the relatives. Yeah, but then like cool. because of my HSC years and also because of the coronavirus, I wasn't able to, you know, get out. Okay. I haven't been outside Australia for... Like, Have you even been outside Australia? I've, I've been to Vanuatu. Oh. Does that count as outside? Is oh yeah, because you went on a cruise ship. Yeah. I see. Yeah, in like 2002 or 2004. Oh wow. I can't remember when it was. But it was in 2003. <laughs> no, probably. It was sometime around there I went on a cruise ship. <laughs> we, we can't even tell if Phil went on a cruise ship before or after I was born. <laughs> yeah, I I haven't been outside Australia since then. So. Yeah, all right, I see. Wow, to think Phil went on a cruise ship in 2002, 2003, 2004, any of these years. <laughs> Sometime around there. That is ages ago. And Phil, you don't look over 16. You look younger than me. <laughs>
I look like I'm your age. <laughs> no offense, no offense. I know, I know. I don't take Has it. anyone, like, how, how old do people, like, normally people think you are? So whenever I walk into, like, which isn't often, but if I walk into a restaurant or something like that, like yeah. a bistro and stuff, they're like, are you over 18? <laughs> like, and then... They won't let me in? It's like, yeah, I am, and I've got to show my ID. Otherwise, oh. like, you're not over 18. That's why you got your driver's license, yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah, because when I came down here, I had a photo ID card from New South Wales, yeah. which is like the alternative to a driver's license. But they didn't accept that. And then they're like, oh, no, that's a New South Wales thing. You need to buy like a special photo ID card for down here type thing. Uh. And then I was like, oh, I'll just get the license. <laughs> it's too hard. <laughs> and then when Phil got that license, instead of, you know, just having it as identity, he actually, you know, practiced driving and all that and got his provisional license. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Actually, funny story, I got my like P license where you can drive by yourself. Yeah. Um, sick, not this September, but the September last year. Yeah. So that was like, so I, I basically went on my P's like 14 months ago. I can't calculate right now. It Sometimes, is, it's 15. About, well, 15? Four, four, 14 or 15, depending on how yeah. when, when, what time of month. I've driven four times since then. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, wow. I've driven more in the span of like a week <laughs> and i have in the last 15 14 months yeah but you know uh phil doesn't really like driving so yeah I don't, like literally it's a long way to the nearest like place shops and stuff yeah but you just walk there so my dentist is an hour and a half walk away i walk there wow <laughs> imagine walking an hour and a half yeah, it's nothing to me i'm used to walking <laughs> <laughs> i mean i can see you got pretty strong legs <laughs> That's a bit of a weird comment. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, so one thing you always spot around here yeah. in the wild is you'll spot wallabies. Ever, like there's one just down there. Oh, um, the wall like, oh, oh, I see. But I almost ran over one. Like my dad almost ran over oh, one. Like really? just on the way back. The way there's back. no Tasmanian devils or anything. Not that I've ever seen. <laughs> so down there you can see a wallaby. Oh. See the little guy there? Ooh, wallaby. Well, uh, he's hopped off. So, um, yeah. So around here on the walks you'll often see wallabies, echidnas. Yep. So, you know, those spiky things. Yeah. Um, and I've been here two, three years. Two, three, one yeah. One snake. I've seen one snake. One snake. Yeah. So they're not common. Yeah, it's almost been three years. Yeah, it's almost been three years. I think in about one year or like, what, one, one month. One month, yeah. I think from that video, you were like January 22nd. Yeah. I remember a lot of stuff, don't I, Phil? It was the exact date. Wow. I didn't even know the date and he knew. Yeah. That goes to show fans probably know more about you than you know yourself. Yeah. Which exposes the creepy part of the internet. Yeah. Are you scared about that, Phil? You know, some fans might know more about you yeah, than you know yourself. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> There's this kind of things called stands. It's a, you know, a ship between stalker and fans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you heard of that? When you said stands, I was thinking, if you know Stan, that you watch the... video, like a Netflix clean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking Stan, and I was like, wait, they've got my life on Stan now? <laughs> 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 oh, look, there it is, a farm in the distance. A farm? Oh, yeah, so that's called a vineyard. It's not called a farm, it's well, a vineyard. Oh, yeah, a vineyard. <laughs> so. I was like, wait, this whole place is basically a farm. Um, yeah. Actually, funny story. If you actually go up past that vineyard, which we're not going to, because we're going to be, um, we're going to be going down there. But if yeah. you went up the vineyard, you'd see a bunch of cows, and they just moo their brains out at you. Oh. So yeah, there is like literally a cow farm just past that vineyard. Wow. So there's more farms, guys. <laughs> moo. Sorry about that. That was actually him, not an actual cow. <laughs> it's a bit of a cow sometimes, joking. The yeah. forest up there, and uh, you know the beaches down there, and then you know sandy. Yeah, quite what was it called? Um, Burney Island. Burney Island. Wait, what? Burney Island. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking Island of the is basically an island of an island of an island. Uh -huh. Australia is an island. Yeah. Which makes it the first island. Then you've got Tasmania, which is an island of an island. Bruni Island is an island of an island of an island. So it's a uh, correct terminology. It's what's known as a uh, what is it called? Um, the Tasmania, like the Australia of Australia of Australia. <laughs> yeah. I because a lot of people say um, Tasmania is the Australia of the Australia. <laughs> yeah. And then you know Tasmania. Bruni Island would be Australia of Tasmania, which makes it Australia of Australia of Australia. Yeah, I guess. So. <laughs> We are cultured people. 
See, there's a car park down there. Yeah, that's a car park. That's um. Yeah, no, it's better to walk. You know, humans are like were evolved to walk, not to drive. We don't even have that in our DNA. You're like trying to promote walking in a walking video. <laughs> <laughs> exercise. Look at Phil, how strong he is. How did he get that exercise? By walking, not by driving, as you just heard from this then. You weren't as slow as I thought you were going to be. You want me to go faster? No, I said you weren't as slow as I thought. Like, I was uh, expecting it would take us half an hour to get down here, but we're yeah. going to do it in 25 minutes. So you're oh, faster well, that, than, that's not that much of a you're difference. You're faster than I thought you were going to be. Ah. Uh, you want to make it tony? No, no. It's okay. Oh, okay. We won't go too far. Oh, yeah. Another, another thing I want to kind of ask you, Phil. Yeah. So, you know how, you know, you didn't do the HSC? Yeah, I didn't do it, yeah. Yeah. What was your decision behind that? Uh, so basically, uh, in year 11, yeah. I got RSI. Uh, oh. And I basically, then at that point, all my exams, Yeah. Um, all the teachers were like writing, you know how you have year 11 exams? Yeah. I think your finger's over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, all the year 11 exams, like all the teachers had to like be my scribe and stuff and it was just getting too hard and I wanted to be a childcare worker and you don't need to go to year 12 for that. So. Yeah, I'm just asking this because, you know, I, I just finished my HSC and then it was that whole stressful pro like process, you know. Yeah, and you're like, why didn't I just skip it like Phil did? <laughs> but um, yeah, so... Well, in our school, there isn't even an option to skip it. Like if you don't want to do it, you actually just drop out. So like the year... Wait, you, if you don't want to do it, you can't drop out? If you don't want to do it, you have to drop out. Oh, okay. Like, there's no option to, you know, just continue being with your mates. Yeah, I see. Yeah, certain jobs you need yeah. to go to year 12 for. Like, what are you planning to be? Probably like a... Well, you're going to uni, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. So... Well, I, I'm not sure if I get a uh, pretty low ATAR, which I don't think Philip knows about. I know the ATAR. It was called the ATAR when <laughs> I was there. Well, I mean... I know what it is. But you never got one. I never got one. Okay. So for those who don't know what an ATAR is. I've kind of explained it a lot on my channel. Okay. Well, I will like give you an actual summary. Of yeah. What it is. As, if, as if all your summaries aren't, aren't worth. Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I might, you might know something I don't know. So an ATAR is just simply a shortcut to university. So you don't have to go through TAFE first. Oh. You could do any university thing that you want to do even if you got an ATAR of one like or, like you literally went the worst you could do you yeah. couldn't even do it you can still do any job that's out there as long as you go to TAFE first yeah so an ATAR is just a good a good mark is a shortcut to the university course you want to do ah. um, which is you know it can cut out four years of TAFE yeah you know what I mean so it's a shortcut what subjects did you like pick when you're in year 11 by the way if you even picked any um, I'm trying to think now. Uh, you know Soft what, it, I Software development and design. Oh yeah, 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 of course, of course. Um, <laughs> if you're alright, I won't trouble you with that. <laughs> if like, it's a bit too hard for you to think I'm of, it's okay. Well, I know in year, in year 9, yeah. year, year 9 electives, yeah. I picked drama. Drama. And IST. information, yeah, IST. Yeah. Yeah, those Did you also things. pick, um... Well, obviously you didn't pick, you know what, because... If you, you tell are, me a subject, I yeah. can tell you if I did it or not. But I'm trying to remember them myself Commerce? is tricky. Commerce? No. Yeah, because well, because 90% of my whole school did that for some reason. Yeah, I know a lot of people did commerce in my school too. Well, you need to know the business strategy. Are you okay with walking backwards? I can walk any direction. I can walk Side. sideways, <laughs> you know. But sideways is hard. Yeah. yeah. Backwards is good. It's wow. better, you know, if, if I walk that way... Yeah. I see the front of my head. Well, I could, I could do the, I could do the reverse thing if you want. Like, you can walk <laughs> forwards and you know. The the audio would be bad if we're like, I was like, I'm talking like this. <laughs> it would be bad audio. So I thought I'll talk like this, so you guys get the better audio. And in the distance, you can see, well, the camera can't really see, but it says Tinderbox Marine Reserve. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So this place here is a fantastic place for anyone who loves to go snorkeling. You know that where you go under the water and check out all the marine life? Yeah. Brilliant pr place to do that. I've never done it and I never will. Oh, wow. <laughs> Disappointment 100. I just thought I'd mention what other people do. Before yeah. I got here, I thought like Tinderbox was some kind of like... You, you know what Tinder is. A, a Tinderbox. Oh. So yeah. I thought you were talking about the dating website. Uh, 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 I'm not, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah. Um, and then I thought you were referring to an actual Tinderbox, which back in the like, olden days they used to make fires with. Oh, you didn't know that? Oh, okay, well, 
Oh, you learn something new every day. So I I learned that back in two thousand seven. Because you know that game RuneScape? Oh, right. And you can make it like you use a Tinder box to. Oh, they named after. So they named up this place after, you know, that box you make fires out of. Yeah, yeah. Because it's got lots of trees here, and if there was a fire, it would be devastating. Oh, no. Well, you, you heard about the bushfires last year. What happened? Yeah, that was devastating. It, it luckily didn't come down, affect our area down here. So. Yeah. It technically didn't affect our area as well, but, you know. Yeah. Like a lot of the rural New South Wales area that was, it was dreadful there. We had to actually kind of pay tribute in like an assembly in our oh, school. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And here it is. Here it is. This is Tinderbox Beach. Yeah. Well that's not re really that much of a beach but yeah. <laughs> that, so that sounded really wrong. It, it's a pretty <laughs> depressing beach if you came here for a surf. Let's yeah. say that. You wouldn't want to surf here. There's also kind of a sailboat there. Yeah, so yeah, that's Bruni Island over there as well. So Bruni Island is actually pretty big. Wow, I can smell the beach smell. Yeah, that beach smell. <laughs> yeah. So um, it smells quite fishy. <laughs> I need to take off my jacket now. It's a bit hot. Okay, I was gonna say we could walk along there for about five minutes. See that along there. But the I good? We good? The tide is quite high, and I wouldn't want you to slip. Yeah. So well, we could do it. Just go slow, don't, no need to rush. Yes. Run. Okay, what my mom kept saying when, you know, I was practicing driving. Just okay. go slow. No need to rush. <laughs> Let's go slow. Yeah. That's what mine said actually as well. She was like freaked out. Safety's first and, you know, if you slip, that's the opposite of safety. And there is moss here, just so you know. Oh, yeah. Um, so I took my cousins down here one day. Yeah, the tide is pretty high. Yeah, it is pretty high. I had these shoes for two years anyway, so it's all good. Okay. As long as you're not damaging anything. Wow. Wow, it is high. <laughs> um, if you if you if you if you want to go back there, it's completely fine. Yeah, I'm. Just I don't want to get my shoes that wet. You yeah, know. Whoa, whoa. It's way too high. So. Yeah. That 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 was our rock adventure. You okay, wanna do a U-turn? Yeah, we'll do a U-turn. There we go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yep. And um, keep enjoying the rest of the Mighty Eagles vlog. Yeah? You want to say anything to the city. camera before you... Um, you're about to hit 100k, do you want to... Awesome, I'm camera shy, but... <laughs> <laughs> Come on guys, get Phil to 100k! Let's get Phil to 100k, well, yeah. when this is uploaded, it's probably already 100k, but you know, we never know. No, it's, well, yeah, by the time maybe you upload, yeah. depends on how long, but I think it's about 300 subs a month, so... Yeah. Probably another two to three months. Come on, let's get filled 100k. You don't want to miss out on this. Anyway, um, I'll cut the camera back on if there's anything interesting, but uh, otherwise, that's going to be the end of this video. See you guys. Bye. In 400 meters, slide right onto Roslyn Ave C623. Slide right onto Roslyn Ave C623. 400 meters at the roundabout, take the first exit and stay on Roslyn Ave C623. We're just um, driving up from that destination point now and um, as you can see, I'm in a different car. Uh, ben is driving. And, and um, we're in the back. Ricky, hey guys, the dog. He's <laughs> upset that Oscar's here. I'm so sorry, Ricky. I'm no, so sorry. It's, it's just he's not used to you, that's it. Yeah. Here is one final shot of, you know, you know the um, Adams family and we're soon gonna head our own ways. And, um, See you guys! Bye! Bye! And there they go. Carding is such a sore. So, um, from now on, my job here in the bank is done. It's just, you know, I have to. I just have to head back to Sydney now. You know, I've got 
here. I've got what I wanted here. <sighs> Let's enjoy this video for one last time. So, yeah, it's always sad to say goodbye. It's always sad to say goodbye, but um, I'll probably come back next year, but you know, it's. You know, it's such like, it's so hard saying goodbye sometimes. You know, this is like weird feeling inside me because you know, before I know I'm already like, you know, I've done with a lot of things, but now, now that I'm actually saying goodbye, I'm just really, really kind of upset now. But that's okay. That's saying goodbye is a part of life. I'm sorry if I sound you know, a little bit philosophical here, but. So now I only have one task here, you know, just drive back to the hotel and um, head back to Sydney. There's not, there's really nothing left for me to do here. You know, I came here for two reasons. I've completed them, but you know, it's the feelings that matter. So I don't even, it's, I'm, I'm just, you know, so, you know, really this just teaches us a lesson about life, you know, um, um, I, I came here all the way to, you know, just, um, you know, record a vlog, which I kind of done. I record a video with Philip, you know, meet the family and all that. I've done. And, you know, the cubing competition, I've also done. So you, you think, you know, because I came here, got what I wanted, I'd be happy. But, well, of course, the vlog didn't really turn out that well because I didn't get that much footage. But, you know, I, I'm happy with it. At least I got to vlog out something. But, you know, I, I still feel sad because, you know, what I realized about this trip is that the things that made me happy is not because I've completed my task. I completed everything I have to do here. It's because, you know, the journey, you know, the, you know, the good times, hanging out with Phil and, you know, chilling around, doing the competition and whatnot. That was what really mattered. You know, any of this completing this task stuff, that's just, you know, guys, you know the saying like money doesn't buy you happiness? That's completely true. You know, I, that today I've just learned. And you know all the all the achievements and successful you know story also doesn't buy happiness. It's, you know the the friends you make. You know the you know socializing with you know someone with such a good great attitude like Phil. You know um you know the friends you make on along the way. That is what really matters. Not you know coming here to get things done. And you know because I got all of these things done, you would think I'm happy. But this is the most sadness I felt in a pretty long time. I know it doesn't feel like this on my face, but um. Saying goodbye is the hardest part of, you know, a trip, you know, visiting friends and whatnot. Everything else is pretty easy. So now, you know, now that I've kind of been finished being sad, I guess it's time to just head back to Sydney. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to pick up my dad first and um, I'm not going to vlog as much the way back because you already saw what it was like on the way here. So, um, that's really all I have to say, guys. Um. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the vlog, um, which is not going to be that interesting. But if you want to stay around and you know, be a loyal fan, that's completely fine. Um, I'll see you at the hotel. It's time to head home, guys. It's um, it's time to head home. You know, it's pretty likely that you know I'll come back here once again, but you know, just nothing beats the feeling of just you know hanging out, the process, you know, the things we've learned along the way. It's a process that brings you happiness, not, you know, getting things done. I know I also said, like, you know, I've got things done. Now I just realized I have a lot of questions I forgot to ask to fill. <laughs> well, you know, it's always next time. And next time, the good thing about being, there being a next time is, um, I wouldn't need a dad. I would, I would be over 18 and, um, you know, my mom will probably be less concerned about me now. Oh. She'll probably still be concerned, but um, even if she wanted me to come with someone, she couldn't really do anything about it. I think we're about to pass um, you know, the Adams family's house again. We've just passed, you know, the house, you know, just what, just while walk, driving up here, which is, you know, a great, really a great thing to watch. But I'm really sad, guys. Um, I just like to point out though, this road is really bendy and curvy and all that. Albion Heights? Huh? I thought this was 
Tasmania, not Wollongong. You're a good man, John Proctor. You are a good man. It's such a shame that the Massachusetts judging system did not let you live. We're gonna say goodbye to this place one last time. This is not a bad motel to stay in, especially since, you know, we can park our car right there and carry our computer in here. So that's not a bad hotel to stay in at all. <sighs> goodbye. You will be missed. All right, guys, we're heading towards Launceston now. And uh, it's just, um, you know, kind of like the halfway point between Devonport and Hobart if we go towards this National Highway 1. So um, that's where we're going to head to. So we'll see you guys then. And I'll probably go out for lunch there. We're at a place called Campbelltown, which makes me wonder, are we even in Tasmania right now? Well, I mean, I don't see like airshades anywhere, so I assume we're at the Tasmanian Campbelltown itself, there's one at Sydney, so um, yeah, there's no airshades, not actual Campbelltown. We're actually stopped here now in Campbelltown, the Campbelltown without airshades for some just packed lunch and all that. I mean, it's not that really interesting, but... Yeah. Welcome to Launceston. The distance, some buildings, and it's pretty beautiful. Okay, after like barely any time in Launceston, because we couldn't really find anything to do there, we're now heading to Le Devonport, where we're gonna board the ship back into Sydney, and um, it's gonna be a sad trip. All right, we're heading back to the spirit of Tasmania again, and um, going on a long queue again. And uh, this time, instead of boarding it to go towards somewhere, we're gonna head back. All right, here we are. We boarded the spirit of Tasmania again. Sad thing about this time is um, this is pretty much where we're gonna live. These are seats, as you can see. They're pretty much just like chairs that recline. Not much different from, you know, like, economy class well, well maybe premium economy class in an actual like flight but um at least we get a great view of the ocean but other than that this is where we spend the next you know 12 hours except i'm probably gonna go watch a movie because last time i missed out on two amazing movies that i could have watched on the ship so you know this is our seat it's not it's you know i mean it's definitely something um premium economy class right here you can see the kind of cars all boarding towards the ship. It's a pretty good sight. All right, we're back on the spirit of Tasmania again for our you know, dinner. And this time I got fish and chips with tartar sauce. You really can't go wrong with this, right? Like, there's no way you can make fish and chips bad. Like, if you make a salad bad, I understand. The fish and chips, there's no way they can make it bad. It's about like 6.20 right now and the cars have just finished boarding, so yeah. I'm now back at the recliner lounge because, you know, that's where the, all the peasants go, as you can see here. And um, as you can see, we're leaving the Devonport now and um, the ship is like barely moving. Um, you can't really see on camera once again. But um, it's, it's like once again having an earthquake. If I place down my elbow on the, on the surface of like, you know, the ship and then my elbow is attached to my arm, this happens. Yeah, it's another earthquake, guys. Goodbye, Devonport. Goodbye, Tasmania. We will surely meet next time. Goodbye. These sailboats in the future pale in comparison with this mammoth. One little sailboats. Are you sure about that? Full PI system. So um, I just got on my um, cabin again because um, this time I'm actually going to be seeing a movie and um, the reason I'm filming my face is because there's no one here. There's literally no one here except for me. 
So I can film however I want. I can be as loud as I want. No, probably not as loud as I want, but there's literally no one here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. I've actually just seen this before, but I'm here again because I've never seen it on a ship. So I just want to see how different it is. Festival. Still all yeah, by myself. Yeah. I gotta say, for cinema, the sound quality is really bad. And like, I the screen is so small as well. You really think this path of peril is the best way to go to the mountain? scared and I didn't go in. But um, I thought I might come back here again to see um what it was like to play FIFA 15. I have played it on before on you know, on an iPad, but um, I want to see what happens when you play with that dreaded 68 rated king. <laughs> so yeah, that's where I'm heading right now. Messi literally looks like six years younger in this in this photo. Look at Manchester City's old logo. I'm gonna play on this. It's Tottenham versus Man City. I don't even know who that is. And um, I think that's Fernandinho. Look at that, we still have the white hot lane. Uh, we're gonna switch out whoever who's 76 with... Oh wait, what? Wait. Wait, this one, this, this Xbox is more updated. They have like the updated like squad and all that. The squad... Oh no, this one still looks absolutely dreadful. Eric Dyer is legit LCB and he's rated 73. And I'm guessing Toby Aldevera hasn't come to the club yet. Okay, well that's a bit of a shame, but um... <laughs> At least he's not 68 rated. Like the one that I witnessed earlier when I came on this boat, so... 76 rated K. Bit of an upgrade, but um, let's see what happens. I'm gonna play on world class difficulty. Uh, I normally play on Legendary, which is a little bit hard for me, but um, because this is so old, I kind of don't want really a challenge, so um, yeah. Barclays Premier League. Not just the Premier League, the Barclays Premier League. If you say just the Premier League, no one knows what you're talking about, so you have to say Barclays. No Barclays, probably not the Premier League. Alright guys, I've just played through one half of this game. <laughs> The controls are so bad. Freaking hell, like, the controls are so much different from, like, modern FIFA. Like, the right trigger button is not even running. It, it's, like, I don't even know how to run. And then the left trigger button is to switch players when defending. I, I, I don't even know what's going on. Wow. I, um, I accidentally done a slide tackle. I don't know what I pressed. But, um... The controls. I think I just like I tried to cross the balls and I tried to like get away. And then um I got a red card. <laughs> Freaking big fifteen. Crap. Crap. Uh they scored from that free kick. Uh crap. That's I, I don't even know. I, I don't even know what, how this game works anymore. I'm gonna play against QPR now. I lost the previous game, like, 1-0. Just because of that freaking free kick. Gold but and also that red card. So, um... Once again, I'm gonna swap out Paulinho, who I have no idea who is. With Mason, who I also have no idea who is. And Adebayo, no. Definitely not. You know what? This team looks good. 
Harry Kane is still 76 rated, but that's okay. And uh, this guy. This guy. This guy. Oh, guys, this goal is not even. <laughs> oh. It's just I'm too used to like the newer FIFAs. Like if you if you play back like one of the old FIFAs, it's just it's not the same. Controls are really not the same. It's just it's it. Yeah, guys, this is not fair. This is not fair. Uh, this is not fair at all. You all guys, I'm gonna play in professional difficulty just because. I'm just way too not used to the physics of this game. And guess who I'm playing against? Freaking Arsenal. So um, this is gonna be a fun game. Guys, I did it. I finally scored a goal. And guess who did it? Guess who did it? Yes. It's a 76 rated cane with number 18 on the back of his shirt. <laughs> To be fair, this is professional difficulty, so that wasn't that impressive. But on his cave, I can't even see the front of his face. But oh, never mind. I just did. And it looks absolutely dreadful, bro. No way. Look at this. It's just a rebound off like the goalkeeper. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's so. Then the one one. I feel like playing another like 30 minutes, even though, you know, it's not how Premier League works, but um, I wanted to be a winner, so let's go. Okay, I think it's penalty shootout time then. So, all my penalty takers here, of course, Hurricanes first. Let's see how it goes. I think I'm gonna just head back to the reclining lounge now. I didn't win that game, so don't even ask. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling a bit seasick as well, so, yeah, more the merrier. We've arrived. Melbourne. Nice. It's time to head home. It's time to head home. Hello, Dan Murphy. It's time to head home. Back here. Welcome to Sydney. Oh my gosh. So, um, yeah. You know you're back in Sydney when the Hume Highway now has three lanes and this, you can still see a lot of cars. Four lanes now, and we're about to reach a place where the 110 is soon going to become 100 and the M31 is about to rename to M5. There it is. We've now reached the point where the M31 ends and splits into M7 and M5. And um, soon we're gonna see the 100 speed limit sign. It's 100 now, boys. If you drive faster, you're penalized. We just gone off the M5 now and um, He's gonna drive himself home, and uh, after that, I'm gonna drive myself home as well. And um, we're gonna head our separate ways. This is indeed a very sad day. Okay, guys, so now I'm back in the car alone again, and um, which makes it officially that you know my trip to Tasmania, this whole like entire itinerary, has is now over, and um. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sad. Um, it, I, uh, yeah. I guess it's time to head home and um, time to resume my normal life. Quick summary of the trip. We've traveled 2,747.4 kilometers 
in this entire journey. You know, from day one until now, we this is the distance we traveled. So um, now it's time to reset this because it's the end of our trip. And from now on, we're just counting down the next one. Wait, crap, I, I misclicked it. Okay, there we go, back to zero. And now I've arrived home at the place where I started this video. So, um, to end of this video, you might be asking, you know, how was the trip? You know, how did everything go for you? I mean, I'm very upset right now. I think that gives you a perspective on how good the trip was. I mean, when I came back from like, you know, Brisbane, like la last year, January, and like the Gold Coast, like in like, 2017, October, I was, I, I was looking forward to coming home. I was like too happy, like, you know, I get to resume my normal life. But then now I'm like really sad. So um, you know, these four days have been the best four days of, you know, my entire 2020, if not my entire life, because, you know, there's so many things that happened for the first time, you know. I met Phil again after like a three year hiatus. You know, I went to my first coffee cubing competition, all that. Um, and, you know, I got to experience like just Tasmania or something like you know, it's just off from the rest of Australia. And then the scenery there was so nice, you know, everything there. <sighs> I, I'm definitely coming back again. I mean, it was such a great place to be. I, I cannot neglect coming back here again. So, um, yeah. Today I learned that the sadder you are when you come home from a trip, the better it was. You know, if you come home from a trip, like, you know, I'm pretty happy. Oh my God, I'm finally home. Then th your trip sucked. But then if you came home, like really upset, like, you know, you're missing out on a lot of things, like I currently feel right now, then your trip was really good and you should, you know, you cherish that for the rest of your life. Other than that, you know, I've arrived home now, so that has to be the end of my four-part vlog series. Um, I know it wasn't that entertaining because I didn't film that many stuff because, you know, the awkwardness, but hope you guys have still enjoyed it anyway. Um, and if you have, make sure to leave this video a like. Let's see if we can get to, um... 22 likes, uh, of course subscribe, of course if you haven't already, um, subscribe to OS first time as well, he's so close to 100k, come on guys. But uh, yeah, that's where I have to end off this episode here, so um, I'll see you guys all in my next video, goodbye. Really, this is a lot. This is almost considered a luxury car.